باشن Good morning, one and all. I am back again. I hope uh, you are all fine, doing good in lockdown situation. So yes, today we are here together for a wonderful topic. And before I start with my topic, let me convey my regards, my thanks from the bottom of my heart to the Priyansu sir that he has provided the platform to me as well as to all the students and of course uh, I would like to convey my thanks to Dr. Nidhi also that you know all the technical support that she has provided me and last but not the least I would like to convey my regards my thanks to RK University of course you know that uh, that is the backbone uh, for the you know the, all the arrangement of this webinar. So, not wasting much of a time, okay, let's start with the concept of today's webinar that is JVP. Right? Okay, so if I talk about JVP in detail, before that, I would like to discuss a few things with you guys. Right? Okay, so what is that thing? why i have chosen this topic right so let me explain a few things about it that why first of all let's discuss if in the field of cardiology in the field of you know study of the heart you know we have studied almost every single point okay in detail or certain topics in brief but this is the one topic jvp okay in which you know we have not gone in depth so far clinically of course theoretically might be we have gone okay but clinically in the icu when the waveform is you know coming on the multi parameters of course okay so at that time how to recognize that jvp waveforms with the patient so clinically somewhere you know we need to brush up ourselves okay before we enter into the icu we are observing the patient we are seeing the patient and uh, you know we are clinically evaluating the patient so jvp is a one of the topic which is untouched clinically <laughs> right so i am here today to make you understand jvp with all the concepts with we are going to clinically correlate all those concepts and we will understand thoroughly okay and at the end of the whole session okay you will be the mastering in jvp waveforms and its clinical implication yes the name of the topic the clinical implications or correlation with all the pathologies right okay so before so this is the reason why i have chosen this topic which is under you see if one more example if i give we all know about the ecg waveform that is pqrs right okay but here i have drawn a wonderful waves okay of gvp can you see this right so this waveform <laughs> very few people know about that and this is just a normal thing forget about abnormal right pathology so in ecg we know about p q r s t you know pr interval you know st segment but that ecg and this jvp waveform is absolutely different right so that was the reason that why i took jvp correct okay so before we start with the fundamental basics of the jvp there are certain thumb, thumb rule you know during all my webinar i used to tell all my uh, viewers okay those who are listening to me right now all the student pg student interns clinicians academicians right that it's my you know humble request to all that the moment i begin with my lecture okay please sit 
with one and a half hour number one okay uh, because as long as you'll be there with me you'll be able to catch all the concepts so number one be with me for one and a half hour number one number two be with your note and pen because there are so many things that you know i'm going to make you note it down right uh, so uh, sit with your note and pen of course okay and third thing which is very important okay if you are having any questions or any doubt please 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 put your queries or the questions or any of the feedback okay in the chat box of course at the end of the session you will be you know given a feedback form that you will have to fill but for any queries or any question please put your you know questions and queries or doubts or anything that you would like to you know repeat okay or uh, anything that you could not understood okay please put your comments in the chat box so that at the end of the session or mid of the session you know uh, whatever it is so at the end of the session uh, those queries will be forwarded to me and i'll be in a position to answer you guys okay so fasten your seat belt and be ready to fly with me of course so yes jvp okay so jvp stands for what let's start with the fundamental basics jvp stands for what it is a jugular vein pressure or jugular venous pulse the question starts from the beginning itself right so jvp stands for what jugular venous pressure or jugular venous pulse it is used for both it is used for both so how how it is used for both let me take an opportunity to write with the whole lecture right thank you so see uh, there are so many things that i have drawn over here okay so each thing that i'll explain you one by one so let's start with the fundamental concept of jvp first okay and then i will uh, uh, make you understand that uh, this jvp stands for both pressure also and pulse also right okay so in the fundamental uh, concept of the jvp uh, this is the one diagram okay that i have shown over here this is the supravena cava this one is the supravena cava okay okay in this uh, supravena cava this one okay and then this one is the internal jugular vein the above one the above one is the internal jugular vein and this one is the supravena cava this supravena cava draining the blood all the way from the jugular vein into the right atrium okay and from the right atrium this is the, of course the tricuspid valve the green color okay the leaflet that i have shown okay and this is the right ventricle okay this is the infravena cava okay so this is the supravena cava this is the infravena cava this is the interjugular vein okay the draining the blood into the right atrium so this is the right ventricle and these are the musculature of the right ventricle and then this is the pulmonary trunk along with the this black color i have shown the pulmonary valve right and this pulmonary trunk divided into the right and left pulmonary artery and the blood is going to for the purification in the lungs right so these was the fundamental diagrams okay here this black color <laughs> the one which you are you know getting in the black color that is the you know this manubrium sternum okay so this is the manubrium of course okay and this two sideways these two veins which is you know all the way from the superior vena cava then this is the interjugular vein this is the two side veins this is the left side going this is the right side going the right one okay it will give one branch over here that i'll explain in this diagram okay it will give one branch for the external jugular vein same here it will give a branch to the external jugular vein and internal jugular vein for the left side okay got it so this is the fundamental diagrams okay now the wonderful concept is coming up now listen to me to understand jvp in a thorough way see this is the right atrium this right atrium now catch my each word this right atrium is very faithfully i repeat this right atrium is very faithfully very faithfully sending the pressure from the right atrium into the interjugular vein i come again this right atrium is very faithfully sending the pressure whatever the amount of pressure is there in the right atrium is very faithfully you know that will be sending up to the level of the internal jugular vein now 
question should come in your mind into the all student that why directly into the internal jugular vein why not the other veins okay why not in the inferior vena cava why not in the uh, external jugular vein the answer is very very simple we have to go back into our first year anatomy right so what the first year anatomy says that okay this is the manubrium sternum black and green color right wonderfully so now what is happening you have to assume that here is heart okay assume that here we have got the heart okay now this is the superior vena cava the one which i am showing over here okay this one is the superior vena cava this superior vena cava is now straight away okay straight away behind the clavicle okay behind the clavicle okay it is giving a straight upward one okay the straight upward this is the internal jugular vein okay and this internal jugular vein so right when uh, right it whenever it is contracting very faithfully it is sending the pressure into the internal jugular vein number one why because it is vertically aligned number one it is vertically aligned straight away with the right atrium number one okay number two external jugular vein this is for the left side i have shown you okay so if you see the anatomically over the over the sternal part and over the clavicular part i have shown in a red uh, that border with the green fiber the red border and the green fiber okay that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle okay this is the sternal fiber and this is the clavicular fiber so between these two fiber there is an interjugular vein okay but out of that in the neck this is the sternal fiber and this is the clavicular fiber so sternocleidomastoid muscle going into the mastoid bone okay so but lateral to it we have a one branch okay we have the one more vein which is draining the blood into the cable system or the venous system that is the this one external jugular vein now number one why it is faithfully transmitted into the internal jugular vein why not other vein number one it is vertically attached with the right atrium first point second point external jugular vein is away from the heart and it is having a you know deviation angle okay and then it is going upward so this deviation may deviate the pressure gradient number two anatomically okay number one is the vertically this interjugular vein whereas the external jugular vein is not vertically forget about the left side because it has to go towards the left and then the branch it has to go towards the left and then it has to give the two branch that is the interjugular vein and external jugular vein i have not mentioned over here because we see the jugular dist venous distension or jugular vein pulse form okay or the wave form over the right side of the neck okay so why the right side of the neck because it is measuring the pressure of the right atrium and we don't have right atrium towards the left side right so uh, yes back to the point so what happens over here okay it has a curvature and then the external jugular vein is come so there is a pressure difference may occur okay so it is not faithfully transmit the pressure which is there in the right atrium it is not faithfully transmitted to the over here in the external jugular vein okay so two point i have mentioned number one it is vertically straight away attached number two external jugular vein is having a bit curved shape okay and then it is going upward okay and draining the blood into the see this is the subclavian vein the vein which is beneath the clavicle if you can see the dotted you know the dots which i have mentioned beneath the clavicle okay so what is happening the subclavian vein all the way okay from the axillary vein basilic vein cephalic vein unite together upward form the axillary and axillary and then basilic vein further goes upward and then it forms what the subclavian now the subclavian vein what it forms okay it goes beneath the clavicle and then it returns all the venous blood into the superior vena cava okay so subclavian vein draining all the blood into the superior vena cava over here okay but in that context in that context 
you know there is a chance okay there is a chance what chance that i will let you later but let me explain the one more point and then i'll talk about that chance the what is the chance that occurs this external jugular vein and this internal jugular vein the major difference both of them is internal jugular vein does not have valve yes internal jugular vein does not have valve whereas the external jugular vein has valve okay if you can see with this dot green color dot that i have showed the valve it is not obstruction so take a note of that okay and if you are you know interested you can watch uh, you can draw the diagram also right so uh, external jugular vein has got the valve whereas the internal jugular vein does not have valve okay forget about this small green color ball okay because here is also green color and here is also green color so it is not the valve okay what it is i'll explain it in some time so external jugular vein has got this valve okay now i'm coming to that you know chance point that what chance may occur when the pre, uh, blood which is coming all the way from the axillary vein basilic vein cephalic vein and then into the subclavian vein what it has a chance it has a chance that due to the high pressure in the subclavian vein due to the high pressure into the subclavian vein what happens it may have a chance to go into the external jugular vein it may have a chance to go into the external jugular vein but what is the function of external jugular vein it has to drain the blood it has to drain the blood from head and neck down into the cavel system but due to the moment it is draining the blood down this this subclavian vein is also draining the blood into the heart but the pressure in the subclavian vein is higher than the external jugular vein okay subclavian vein draining the all you know the blood of the any side of the, if it is we talk about the right side then right side of the upper limb of the blood is draining so the pressure in the, the this subclavian vein is higher than the internal jugular vein so there is a chance that while draining back into the heart okay it has a chance to go into the external jugular vein and that is the reason god does not want that nature does not want that right and hence the valve has been kept which allows only and only what is the function of the valve you need directional flow right so from the external jugular vein this valve okay even though the subclavian blood would love to go upward into the you know external jugular vein from here to go upward because of the high pressure but this valve will not allow that okay and that is the reason external jugular vein has got the valve if it is uh, got the valve over here then definitely uh, you know it cannot measure the uh, you know the amount of pressure which is there in the uh, right atrium because of the valve okay because this valve will act like an a unidirectional flow so blood will go from upward to downward into the cavel system correct so but at the same time internal jugular vein it does not have valve okay so internal jugular vein is valveless okay because of that what is happening see you you may think that sir uh, there is also chance na, that blood move for, uh, further go uh, you know forward and there is chance to go upward in the internal jugular vein then what no by the time it drains all due to the anatomical structure this is of course a functional diagram if you see the pure anatomical diagram you will see that the curvature of from the subclavian into the superior vena cava the curvature is in a such a way that you know the blood will definitely uh, drain into the superior vena vena cava and then a bit side and upward there is an interjugular vein a bit side okay for example if i show something like this so subclavian beneath the clavicle it comes okay it is a chance to go into the external jugular vein so that the god has given the valve number one but you may have a uh, thought that sir it may go into the internal jugular vein but the jugular vein has been placed or you know it has been there in our body in such a way that you know the blood will angle you and you know the angle is created between the uh, this uh, subclavian vein and the superior vena cava the blood will drain easily into the superior vena cava and then from the sideways the uh, internal jugular vein is coming up so it has an angle in such a way that it drains straight away down rather than coming into the internal jugular vein so anatomy is very important to understand the concept okay so sternocleidomastoid muscle 
okay beneath that the interjugular vein is going so that you know the pulsation you know is not visible to us pulsation is not you know uh, i would say palpable to us visible we can uh, you know with the obvious distension is there we can obviously visible it is but usually it is not palpable okay it's because the interjugular vein is beneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle okay so this is what this is what the you know whole concept that i have made you understand that why the right atrium is very faithfully transmitting the pressure into the internal jugular vein why not in the uh, other uh, veins like external jugular vein or some other veins okay and last concept that why it is faithfully transmitted the thing is that there is no sphincter there is no sphincter between the right atrium and the superior vena cava all together with the internal jugular vein i repeat there is a no sphincter there is a no sphincter between the between the right atrium then superior vena cava and straight away upward to the internal jugular vein for example see esophagus and stomach we have a sphincter in between stomach and then uh, duodenum jejunum we have a sphincter in between okay urinary bladder we have a sphincter okay so it can hold okay it can hold or it can act as in a barrier that sphincter but here we do not have sphincter okay so there is no barrier so internal jugular vein number 1 vertically straight to the right atrium number 1 it does not have valve like an external jugular vein why external jugular has valve i have explained very well okay so clear your concept okay if you want if you want to go through this you know clinically you will have to very sound so why there is a valve i have explained you number 3 so number 1 vertical number 2 there is no valve in the interjugular vein and number 3 which is very important there is no sphincter between the right atrium and the superior vena cava and the internal jugular vein so very faithfully the right atrial pressure has been faithfully observed at the level of the internal jugular vein my question okay or the student may arise in a question sir why internal jugular vein why not superior vena cava why only internal jugular vein why not superior vena cava yahan se bhi to hum kar sakte hai na we we do we can uh, take the uh, pressure of the right atrium from the superior vena cava na let me tell you guys superior vena cava okay which is there which is there okay in the thorax beneath the clavicle and near to the sternum so it is very difficult to observe and over to that the lungs is covering okay over to that the lung is getting covered okay upper lobe so what is happening it is very difficult to gain an access directly into the superior vena cava again first year anatomy so straight away it is difficult to gain an access okay it's not like icd we are not going for doing an icd that a slight you know uh, incision and then a blunt uh, dissection through the finger and then putting the tubes it is not like that okay we have to you know access the superior vena cava in uh, and that is not possible actually okay and hence this it is coming upward okay and here we have in the neck okay that is the internal jugular vein that is easily palpable okay and easily in that we can enter the swan gaze catheter and that catheter straight away runs down okay swan gaze catheter is the one through which we can inject important drug we can take the blood samples okay post operatively okay May, uh, mainly to and we can inject the uh, drugs we can take the samples along with that this swan gaze catheter also is it is you know all the way from the uh, interjugular vein to till the right atrium it gets down okay and hence faithfully it check the pressure in the right atrium also right so why not superior vena cava that you got the answer why not other veins you got an answer right so now we have left with only this one vein we have left with only one vein that is the internal jugular vein okay so now internal jugular vein is having the pressure of the right atrium which is very faithfully measured okay and then we can distinguish that the pressure 
okay that pressure it's also create the pulse okay that pressure is also create the pulse and whereas the jvp stands for the jugular venous pressure as well as pulse right so how the pressure create the pulse wave pulse form okay that we'll see in some you know in some time okay that we'll see in some time okay but before that before that i want to explain you one more concept okay what is the concept is now understand very important and critical concept understand that if the right atrium is having the basic pressure normal one okay so the right atrium is having the basic normal pressure is 8 cm h2 i repeat the basic right atrium pressure normal one is 8 cm h2 now the question comes into the student's mind so since first year to till last year okay or the second third fourth year or the intense student okay pg student might be knowing this concept uh, faculty members also might be knowing this concept but student of course i want i want to clear students doubt first okay so till date whatever we have studied or whatever we have read in the book or in the ppt or in the google or any of the format wherever we have studied that you know pressure measured in mmfg from where do you get that centimeter of h2 right <laughs> that question should come in students mind that's a you know you say that the right atrium is having a pressure of 8 centimeter of h2 of course it is that okay but why not in mm at g make a note of that guys a wonderful concept that i would like to clear whatever the pressure that you are measuring in mm at g till date that was the brachial artery pressure yeah what you are doing you take the sphygmomanometer you take the cuff okay and then you are tidying up over here over the brachial artery with your beautiful stethoscope what you are doing you are putting up over here and then you are hearing the systole and diastole um, uh, pressure okay and then this was the mercury which was going up and down and hence you are measuring the arterial blood pressure in mmhg do you measure the blood pressure of basal vein and cephalic vein over here through sphygmomanometer do you so you are measuring the arterial blood pressure okay in mm hg okay you cannot tie this sphygmomanometer cuff over here around the neck and then in, uh, you know you are increasing uh, the pressure over here <laughs> don't do that okay so you know first thing first you are not measuring the arterial pressure over here you are measuring the venous pressure which is coming all the way into the right atrium so the venous blood which is coming into the right atrium we are measuring that pressure okay so number one mmfg why it is not yes later on we can convert into mmfg okay but with the help of signal manometer we are not measuring over here so it will be not in the mmfg initially later on we can convert and i will make you convert that also so don't worry i am not going to you know live like this this topic i will clear the each concept so of course we are going to measure that in mmfg also so this centimeter h2 okay now let's understand why centimeter of h2 that centimeter we understand distance but h2 water why guys understand very clearly density of blood density of blood is near normal equal to density of water h2o the density of the blood this you can see the red dots red dots i have shown as in a blood okay so density of the blood is near normal is near normal to the density of the water okay it is around density of the blood is around 1060 okay and the blood dense uh, this is blood density it is 1060 1060 and the blood density is exactly 1000 so difference is just 50 60 okay so density of the water is 1000 and the density of the blood is 1060 so they are near normal equal so now we do not have unit of blood we do not have unit of blood but we do have unit of water that is s2 okay so that is centimeter h2 which is faithfully measured 
with because density of the blood is same as equal to as water so we can take that okay so the right atrial pressure okay initially it is measured as in a centimeter of h2o centimeter matlab a distance between the internal jugular vein and the right atrium so centimeter okay distance between the internal jugular vein to the right atrium so first unit is the centimeter because it's in a distance okay number 2 h2o because what we are measuring the pressure of blood but we do not have unit of blood we have unit of water that is h2o so what we are doing what we are doing is density of the blood is as equal as density of water near normal exactly i am not talking okay so near normal we are taking as an h2o so centimeter h2o so whatever the amount of blood density is there whatever amount of blood density is there between the right atrium which is faithfully passing into the internal jugular vein so that we called as in density of water and hence the unit came centimeter of h2o guys make a note of that you know uh, these are the things which is not there in book i am telling you guys these are the thing is not there in the book make a note of it okay so this centimeter of h2o is around 8 cm h2o 8 okay so this 8 cm h2o how that 8 cm came that i will explain again anatomically so 8 cm pressure that i told you okay but why this is 8 cm pressure that one should understand okay this 8 cm how it came see can you see this sternum and manubrium see uh, this uh, manubrium i have drawn but sternum i have drawn here okay so sternum manubrium so this sternum manubrium okay this height from the center of the right atrium the height from the center of the right atrium okay this height is around 5 cm how much this height is around 5 cm 5 okay now from the from the upper border okay from the upper border of the manubrium okay the jugular vein this jugular vein okay this blue color arrow okay so this jugular vein okay i'll show it from here this jugular vein okay it has an a height from the upper border of the sternum okay where we are getting the pulsation okay where we are getting the pulsation or the pressure measurement okay that is 3 cm anatomically okay and the which is there in normal for me for you guys for almost all okay except small kids okay because they are in a grow growing stage i am talking about the normal adult individual like we all okay so what is happening this is the 8 cm okay this is the 8 cm and this is the 3 cm so the height which is there from the center of the right atrium to the manubrium that is the 5 cm anatomically and the height from the upper border of the manubrium to till where we are getting the pulsation or the wave form that is 3 cm so all together okay we know the maths Uh, though we are the science student that uh, 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 so 8 cm distance and what we are measuring the density of blood but density of blood is as equal as what i said density of water right okay so 8 cm h2o okay that is the pressure that how we measured okay so if the person is sitting upright straight vertically okay patient is sitting upright straight vertically then from the right atrium center to till the manubrium upper border that is the 5 cm from the 5 cm to internal jugular vein that is the 3 cm so all together 8 cm okay one more concept that i would like to clear over here that student may ask sir when we google it when we google it okay that shows sir that it is a 3 cm of h2 you are saying that 8 cm of h2o how is that possible both the answer is right both the answer is right what i am saying is 8 cm of h2o right book or the google or any other ppt or if you have heard somewhere or if you have read somewhere over the google and if they says the 3 cm also h2o the answer is still correct how 
they are not writing in detail and or or else we need to understand in detail when they are talking about 3 cm osteo matlab they are talking about from the level of manubrium they are talking about the level of manubrium the pressure is 3 cm of h2 so from here okay so it is 3 cm of h2 which is the pressure which is there in the interjugular vein okay the pressure which is there and from the right atrium if you measure it is 8 cm okay so the moment when you get the you know or even even in the viva also you can say that sir if you measure the pressure from the right atrium center of the right atrium it is 8 cm h2 and sir if you measured it from the upper border of the manubrium then it is 3 cm h2 because we have to deduct this centimeter okay pressure is there same like what is there in the you know uh, the right atrium okay so the answer for both is same but just the level from where we are measuring is different and hence the centimeter is going up and down okay this is the 8 centimeter this is the 3 centimeter right okay so now this is 8 centimeter h2 let's consider that okay now what i'm doing is okay this 8 centimeter of h2 okay i told you that i will cover each point okay in context of what now i'm going to convert into mmhg right so i told you that uh, you must be sit with your pen and note let's understand that you know one centimeter h2 okay a bit mathematical calculation but the rest of the that uh, you know the concept is very wonderful okay these are the hidden things that i'm letting you know okay so the one centimeter of h2o is equal to 0 0.73555 mmhg i repeat one centimeter of h2o is equal to 0 0.73555 three times five mmhg so if one centimeter of h2o is 0 0.73555 mmhg then 8 centimeter of h2o is equal to how much mmhg now we, can you calculate so yes you can convert this pressure into mmhg but initially not once you get the pressure in the centimeter of h2o then we have a conversation okay so th through the use of that tool of a conversation from the centimeter h2 to mmfg you can convert it and then you can talk about that the right atrium pressure is this much so if you convert it the pressure will be around 5.88 mmfg near approximately 6 mmfg so pressure in the right atrium okay we not tell the exact value we tell in the range so 6 to 8 or 5 to 8 mmfg Okay, because few patients might be having a less, a bit less, few patients might be having a bit uh, more, that varies according to. Okay, so what we converted 8 centimeter of H2 into mmFg was 5.88 mmFg near normal to 6 mmFg. So here we get the 6 millimeter of mercury pressure. You know, in the first year or in the third year clinical, you know, we have studied that the right atrium is having a this much pressure but fr from where this pressure came that was a loop that was a question mark i have cleared that doubt right now from where the right atrium has got the 6 to 8 mm mg pressure from this from this they have got because all the time doctor is not going to put the swam gas catheter to measure the right atrium pressure guys come on it is not always all the time it is in the pathology because we have to understand the waveform that what are the uh, pulsation coming all the way from the right atrium post-operative cardiac surgery or any other other cardiac pathologies so i hope the pressure that i have made you understand very nicely detailed and why internal jugular vein okay now moving further okay one thing that i want to clear it out okay because i have explained the pressure very nicely so one thing guys ye to aapko na likh lena hai hai na this is the something you know coming uh, which is very useful okay for you all guys as i told you there is no sphincter there is no valve and it is vertically attached i repeat it is very faithfully transmit the pressure right atrium into the interjugular vein because it is vertical there is no valve and there is no deviation okay 
and because of that because of that god has given us god has given us listen to me very carefully god has given us this internal jugular vein vertically straight to the right atrium okay and because of that god has given a natural biological manometer in our body to measure the right atrial pressure yes guys this is the concept by god grace naturally biologically anatomically this inter internal jugular vein act as an a biological manometer see if you talk about the brachial artery pressure okay you have to take the sphygmomanometer and then you have to measure right so that was the sphygmomanometer the same way this was the manometer for the right atrium which is naturally there in our body naturally okay that is a sphygmomanometer machine artificial machine this is the biological naturally we have in our body a very beautiful concept guys one must understand this and that is the reason you know i always focus more 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 over the anatomy once the anatomy is clear your and physiology of course okay all the concept is clear okay so this is the biologically natural by god grace it has been given in our body that the right atrium is having a direct biological manometer in our body itself we just need to calculate the pressure from there on that calculation just i told you but calculation i'll come you know a bit in detail in some time okay this is just a vertical uh, diagram okay calculation you know in of the jvp i'll come in some time okay guys so here on you know i have distinguished the a basic fundamental concept of jvp so jugular venous pressure and that pressure gives the pulse form that pressure gives the pulse form so how that pressure is going to give the pulse form okay let's talk about that right now see guys you have to catch my each word from here on okay to understand the graph in ecg the beginning of my lecture i have explained we know about the pqrst okay since first year to till intern then pg then academic life okay we know about the pqrst but do we know about the jugular vein graph do we know about the paradoxical graph do we know about how based on the graph we should you know it is coming on the multi parameter based on the graph okay see this graph is not for design or just to cover up the board these are abnormal graph okay these are the abnormal graph okay so i'll explain the later part when we start with the pathology right now i am in the basics okay right now i am in the basics then i'll talk about the anatomy physiology basic basic graph and then pathology this is my pattern okay so from here onward catch my each one so now uh if you have gone through my flyer you must have read that i'm going to correlate this graph with the cardiac cycle correct okay so let's start the begin with the cardiac cycle okay how the cardiac cycle is correlated with this graph okay and there we will come to know throughout the cardiac cycle if any deviation in the graph if any deviation like ecg which is also uh, related with the cardiac cycle atrial contraction atrial depolarization then repolarization ventricular depolarization uh, that is r wave and all okay anything abnormality st segment okay myocardial abnormality correlated with st segment the so same way we have to correlate with this cardiac cycle it is as equal as important guys like an ecg okay which was untouched in student life okay maybe academicians knows but the stu in student life this was untouched topic okay so now we are going to correlate the whole this whole this fundamental basics of jvp and then pulsation okay how it occurs with the graph form okay so let's assume that this black border line is in a piece of paper okay this is the piece of paper hypothetically we do not have that thing in our body but hypothetically consider this is in a one green ball green color but that is hypothetically okay we do not have ball in the uh, jugular vein internal of course 
so hypothetically there is a ball over the you know uh, the 8 cm intrajugular vein from the center of the right atrium 8 cm we measured with the ruler okay with the scale and then there we kept the the floating ball floating matlab it can float up and down up and down up and down so and from that ball from that ball we have taken the pointer out can you see the green arrow we have taken the see initially you must have got scared oh, so many arrows are there what arrow where it is going okay i'll tell you this this arrow was the uh, three centimeter this arrow was the five centimeter so number one arrow is clear number two arrow is clear now this two is remained yet that i will explain what it is so number third arrow is the pointer which is coming out okay pointer which is coming out up to the level of the paper piece of paper this is the piece of paper now we have to correlate with the cardiac cycle so let's start with the cardiac cycle yes when the atrial contraction occurs number one and now correlating with the cardiac cycle when the atrial contraction occurs guys what is happening the blood is going down into the ventricle okay this valve are open already okay initially because of the pressure gradient okay atrial contraction when it occurs atrial contraction first year physiology we all know that atrial contraction occurs for the atrial kick the slow filling phase the amount of blood which is remains still there in the atrial which supposed to go into the ventricle but it is not going because the pressure is now degree uh, you know decreasing and hence the atrial contraction start that is the atrial kick that is the atrial kick because of that the remaining amount of blood okay it will go down that is during the slow filling rapid filling mein kya hota hai? we all know that the blood the moment uh, you know atrium is relaxing listen me the blood is coming all the way from the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava and when the atrial is relaxing the atrial is getting filled up okay due to the pressure gradient okay when the atrial was filling up this was ventricle is going for contraction so now the blood is ejected out so the pressure in the ventricle is now less and the pressure in the aorta uh, sorry atrium right atrium of course is getting high so due to the pressure gradient this tricuspid valve is getting open it does not uh, play a role of the atrial contraction over there so misconception if any of the students are having that atrial contraction and valve got open it is not that due to the pressure gradient the valve is getting open okay so rapid filling first occurs and for the slow filling the moment the blood is not going downward because pressure now is higher in the ventricle because the blood has gone down and the pressure is now less in the atria so last part which has to be in the slow filling the last part has to be you know pumped into the ventricle from the atria at that time atrial kick occurs and that is the atrial contraction so atrial kick wonderful concept so that when the atrial contraction occurs it sends the remaining amount of blood now back to the theory okay now i'm coming to the car so in the cardiac cycle when the atrial contraction occurs okay what happens the blood is slow in in the phase of slow filling the blood is you know going down through this tricuspid valve into the ventricle but as i told you this atrium does not have sphincter over here this atrium does not have sphincter over here so what will happen the moment it will contract the blood has a two choice the blood has a two choice the number one choice is let's go down into the ventricle let's go down into the ventricle but it will be a choice for whom the blood which is there nearby the tricuspid valve the blood which is there nearby the tricuspid valve but the blood which is just about to enter into the atrium because before atrial contraction relaxation there was a relaxation diastole okay so before atrial contraction the blood was about to for example blood is somewhere over here okay just just about to enter into the right atrium and same time atrial goes for the contraction so the blood which is there near the tricuspid area or tricuspid valve it will go down but due to there is no sphincter due to there is no sphincter in the right atrium superior vena cava and the internal jugular vein so what is happening the blood which was about to enter into the right atrium now will it be able to enter 
the question is that okay you can put the answer is the chat box that will it be able to enter into the atrium answer is no answer is no it will not be able to enter so what will happen it will go for a back flow it will go for a back flow so if atrial contracts and there is an atrial kick and that kick is sending the blood back okay so this ball pointer this ball it will come down or go up this atrial contraction gives atrial kick the blood which was about to enter into the right atrium now what will happen due to the contraction pressure is higher in the atria compared to the superior vein atria in the jugular vein what is happening it will contract and push the blood backward the moment it will push the blood backward can you see the blue arrow it will take the ball up so blue arrow is showing the movement of the ball which is going upward so this pointer which is there on the piece of paper it will move upward the moment it will move upward you can see that you can appreciate the graph that see the pointer is drawing an upward graph positive okay the pointer is going upward and graph is positive okay so that first positive graph due to the atrial kick or the atrial contraction because of it has an a two choice number one the blood which is there nearby tricuspid will go down <clears throat> that is number one number two the blood which was about to enter into the atrium now it will not be able to enter because of the contraction of the atrial uh, muscle okay myocardium what will happen the blood would love to go back for a while not all the time for a while okay and hence this ball hypothetical ball of course will go upward and this upward movement will show in this blue arrow and the graph is going upward and up to the mid yaha tak sit okay up to this level don't go for downfall downfall is different graph okay so this this positive wave this positive wave is called as an a wave you know ecg mein pq rst mein first wave p wave atrial contraction same way a wave okay because of the atrial kick the hypothetical ball is going upward because of the back pressure number 1 okay now let's go further okay so first wave we have distinguished that is a wave i hope there should not be any question right now number 2 let's move the cardiac cycle further so this was the atrial kick now all the blood has gone down okay now ventricle is ready to contract now ventricle is ready to contract but before that what is happening the uh, what happens the valve the leaflet of the tricuspid valve is getting closed okay and the pulmonary valve is also closed and the ventricle is about to get contract it will take some time that is called as an isovolumetric contraction so during that phase in the ventricle there is an isovolumetric contraction but in the atrial phase what is happening dilatation diastole so in the atrial phase okay in the diastole is started occurring whereas here the isovolumetric contraction about it will take some time so the the pulmonary valve has not opened up properly yet okay so what is happening over here okay the atrial diastole occurs matlab inferior vena cava superior vena cava all the way the blood will come down okay in prevenica and supervenica all the way it will blood drain into the right atrium so what is happening now the back pressure whatever the blood and the hypothetical ball has gone up now it is draining back because the diastole of the atrium started so because the diastole of the atrium started what is happening at that time this hypothetical ball come down but a little bit can you see this can you appreciate that the ball is coming down a little bit not straight away down a little bit down okay then there is an one curvature a small positive wave that i'll explain what is that small positive but a graph is coming a little bit down because the atrial dilatation correct because the venous blood is coming down the moment the venous blood from the inferior jugular vein it is coming down into the superior vena cava the hypothetical ball will come down the graph will come down okay fine but it is straight away not come down like how the straight away it is gone up there is a one one small positive wave is coming in between okay so by the time what is happening <clears throat> by the time what is happening 
isovolumetric contraction has been got over okay the moment the you know it will relax okay and the blood has gone down there is a descent wave downward wave <clears throat> now by the time the isovolumetric contraction got over and now the pulmonary valve will get open okay by the time forcefully ventricle when it contracts right ventricle forcefully when it contracts this closure of the valve okay the moment the right ventricle forcefully it contract you know the moment contract the moment contract it gives the it gives the back pressure over the leaflet of the valve it gives the back pressure over the leaflet of the valve okay the closure of the valve was there okay so it gives the back pressure over the leaflet of the valve and those you know who have who are have you know uh, listened my uh, s1 heart sound s1 we all know that the, the s1 occurs because of the vibration set in the leaflet because tricuspid valve leaflet okay tricuspid valve leaflet they are thin in nature they are thin in nature so what happens do when the ventricle contracts left ventricle and right ventricle contract it has ability to because of the thin in nature okay it has an ability to revert back and then come down revert back and come down so it is you know revert back into the atria and then again coming down that again coming down because of the chordae tendine and papillary muscle chordae tendine and papillary muscle are pulling them down chordae tendine and papillary muscles are pulling them down so the moment the ventricle contract the valve because it is a thin in nature valve are not thick like a semilunar valve seminal valve are thick compared to the atrioventricular valve okay so let's talk about the tricuspid valve so the moment the ventricle contract it goes upward and then downward so this uh, upward movement because of the ventricle contraction downward movement of the valve because of the you know pull from the chordae tendine and papillary muscle and that set the vibration okay because the closure of the valve produce the sound opening of the valve does not produce the sound see no sound when i close sound produce so it set the vibration and it produce the sound while closing so that that upward movement of the leaflet when it goes upward okay it gives a little kick it gives a little positive pressure during the atrial relaxation because yahan pe ventricle contraction chalu hone wala hai systole yahan pe diastole chal raha hai theek hai the moment the ventricle goes for the contraction isovolumetric is over now the moment the pulmonary valve got open it is forcefully contracting the valve is you know going a bit upward and the and it gives the a bit small positive pressure and that small positive pressure reflected into the right atrium which is very faithfully i told you it is a biological manometer it is a biological manometer by god grace it is given okay so we cannot neglect it so the moment there is a uh, slight pressure during the ventricular contraction the leaflet goes upward and creating the pressure slight pressure in the right ventricle is very faithfully measured that the valve hypothetically will go a bit up because of the pressure in the right ventricle is going a bit high because of the vibration set in the ventricular contraction the pressure which is going backward into the right atrium due to ventricle contraction closure of the valve and the vibration set the backward pressure goes into the right atrium a little bit which is very faithfully in a biological manometer of the interjugular vein is very faithfully measured and the ball hypothetically will go slight upward this is this and that is the reason i told you straight away it is not coming down it has one curve curvature that is a small curvature and that small positive wave is called as an c C stands for closure of AV valve, specifically tricuspid. Closure of the tricuspid valve. So this is C. A stands for close uh, atrial kick, atrial contraction. A wave, closure of this tricuspid valve. C wave. Now what is happening? Once the ventricle contracts. Okay. Now let's forget about the ventricle contraction. Let's because the we are talking about the atrial pressure. So concentrate more on the atrium. so let's forget about the ventricle contraction the moment it is going yahan pe kya ho raha at that time ventricle diastole okay so the ventricle diastole but the blood is coming down because we all know that atrial contraction is hardly for 0.1 second diastole is for 0.7 second so for long period of time atrial is going for a diastole 
so the blood is falling uh, down into the atrium filling into the atrium from the inferior vena cava uh, but we are not much talk about inferior vena cava we will focus only the superior vena cava and the jugular vein so from the head and neck and brain the blood is all the way coming down during the atrial relaxation the moment it is going into the atrial relaxation what is happening the hypothetical ball it will go up or down now you are in a position to understand the basic concept of this graph so the hypothetical ball would go down and the moment it will go down this is the wave and this is called as a descent x descent x okay i hope this is visible to all it is called as an x descent okay so this is how the atrial contraction to atrial relaxation you know well, this is what the you know uh, the pattern that i have explained but relaxation i told you it is for 7.7 .7 seconds so it is not yet over it is not yet over it is just one wave okay so relaxation is not yet over what is happening the atrial relaxation because the blood uh, came down and it is filling the atrium the x descent occur okay so i repeat atrial kick contracted a backflow positive wave finished then iso volumetric contraction the blood was getting filled into atrium okay so there was an a bit downfall but the moment the iso volumetric contraction got over of the ventricle it will go for a strong contraction okay to open up the pulmonary valve strong contraction to open up the pulmonary valve so that there is a back pressure into the atrium along with this leaflet leaflet are very thin they revert back into the atrium because this leaflet and that is the reason regurgitation is more seen in the uh this mitral valve and tricuspid valve rather than aortic and pulmonary regurgitation regurgitation is not much seen in the seminal valve it is more in the mitral valve and tricuspid valve okay you must go through the echo report of at least 10 patient you will see the regurgitation in the atrioventricular valve not in the seminal valve okay so now the moment atrial kick occurs uh, sorry ventricular uh, uh, pressure occurs positive wave and gives this c wave okay closer of the tricuspid valve and then atrial is further relaxed and this is going for contraction so atrial further relaxes blood is coming into the right atrium and hence the hypothetical ball is going down because the blood is returning down and then the pressure is going down so called as an x descent so called as an x descent now after that what is happening atrial cannot accommodate the blood more than its capacity still the diastole is occurring 0.7 but once it is get filled more than that it will be not be in a position to accommodate the more blood so it if it is not able to accommodate the more blood because if it is already filled now what is happening see the atrium is completely filled now what is happening it will not be able to receive the blood and hence the blood will again accumulated into the venal system the blood will be accumulated into the cavern system venous system and then now due to the accumulation of blood what is happening so you know uh, we all know that when the atrial cannot accommodate the more blood okay once the whole atrium is been filled with the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava blood which has been returned during the diastole of the atrium the moment it will filled you know uh, not beyond the limit okay at that time there is an accumulation of the blood in the cavern system again there is an accumulation of the blood and because of that accumulation there will be a back flow and again that back flow will raise the hypothetical ball upward this okay this hypothetical ball will raise the upward okay and the moment it will raise the upward what is happening straight away again a positive wave because the ball is going up the ball is going up and produce the wave and that is wave is called as an v wave okay so till now we have seen the three positive wave a positive wave because the atrial kick and the uh, pressure will go back then c wave because of the closure of the tricuspid valve and ventricular forceful contraction a bit positive wave and the v wave because the accumulation of the atrial blood is already filled now now because no blood is coming into the atrium and atrial diastole is still you know longer period of time so by the time atrium is not going to contract okay so the atrium is filled and it is not going to contract then by the time what is happening into the venous system 
it will accumulate the blood and the moment it will accumulate the blood the hypothetical ball will raised up okay and because pressure is getting raised up okay the pressure is getting raised up and hence there is a strong v wave there is a strong v wave and the, the moment there is a strong v wave what is happening now atrial diastole is getting over and the moment the atrial diastole is getting over what will happen the pressure over the right atrium is far better than the right ventricle because ab ventricle ka pura blood bahar chala gaya yahan pe to diastole chal raha tha tab yahan pe ventricular systole chal raha tha the majority of the blood has been moved into the pulmonary system so now the pressure has fall down into the right ventricle and the pressure is higher in the right atrium because during the diastole there was no filling so because of the pressure gradient the valve will get open there is no role of the atrial contraction yet so the due to the pressure gradient the valve will get opened up and due to the valve will the moment the valve will get open the blood will rush out in a rapid filling okay the blood will move from the right atrium to right ventricle in a rapid filling we have a stage of rapid filling in cardiac cycle okay so blood will move rapidly from the atrium to ventricle and then there is a downfall this red arrow so for x descent for the x descent when the ventricle was filled sorry atrium is getting filled there was an a downward arrow this red color and there was an x descent and when there is an a ventricular diastole valve will get open and the there is an a rapid filling from atria to ventricle there is an a again one descent and that descent is called as an y descent okay so we have two downfall and we have three upstroke in throughout the one cardiac cycle okay next what will happen the new cardiac cycle will start how rapid filling occurs now slow filling slow filling atrium has to contract for atrial kick this is this the moment atrial will contract back pressure will occur a wave okay then then the moment atrial uh, already contracted okay and now it is going for a diastole atrium contraction only for 0.1 second okay so now it is going for diastole so blood will again return back for filling this filling is descent but not the full descent okay then it will stop okay and what will happen by the time there is no there is no closure of the valve okay there is no closure of the valve and ventricle is about to contract okay the moment because slow filling is over for very short time so valve got closed and ventricle contracted the back pressure for a little moment into the atria which is very faithfully measured by a bi bi biological manometer that is the c wave okay so closure of the tricuspid valve and the ventricle contraction c wave and then x descent that means now isovolumetric contraction is over and the pulmonary valve got over it the ventricle is contracting but forget about the ventricle part here is the ventricle uh, atrial diastole started this atrial diastole will fill the blood into the right atrium it will fill the blood into the right atrium and because of that there is a x descent because of that there is a x descent okay and now the moment atria relaxed completely the blood you know filled completely now no more blood is getting accumulated there is a back flow okay because atrium is filled during the diastole so there is no more blood can occupy into the right atrium so there is a accumulation of the blood in the cavall system in the venous system into jugular vein and hence it is called as in <coughs> v wave positive the hypothetical ball will go up so v wave and now atrial diastole is over okay and now when when due to the pressure gradient the valve is getting open okay here the contraction is over blood has gone out now the pressure in the ventricle is less compared to the pressure in the right atrium because here the filling occurs so filling the blood pressure is more in the atrium than the ventricle so due to the pressure gradient the valve will get open and rapid filling occurs that rapid filling occurs all the blood is going downward and hence the hypothetic ball will come down because the blood is going down and accumulated blood has started coming into the ventricle okay and hence there is a wide descent so this whole natural wave okay this is a normal natural wave that you see after the you know after the the moment the swan gaze catheter 
you know that has been inserted through the internal jugular vein into the superior vena cava into the right atrium so on a digital screen multi parameters along with heart rate respiratory rate temperature saturation arterial blood pressure at the same time respiratory graph okay respiratory rate also okay at the same time meanwhile you will see this graph also and that is the jugular venous pressure graph but we neglect that most of the time but you know uh, uh, you still uh, believe that okay, sir, this is a normal graph okay but what is the importance of it okay that clinically i will correlate and moment i clinically correlate you will be in a position that yes sir you were absolutely right that this graph we have neglected but this is really important okay so this was the natural graph normal graph of jvp which has been on the piece of paper with the pointer hypothetically ball we have measured it over here okay which is if you go through the books it is, it is difficult to understand right so i have tried to make the things easy for you with the pointer piece of paper and graph and cardiac cycle so hereby i have uh, correlate the cardiac cycle with the graph and how the waveform occurs with the pulsation. So this upstroke, this upstroke, this upstroke gives the jugular venous pulsation. Okay, and the pressure which gives up and down, up and down is also called as in for jugular venous pressure. So JVP, the moment I started and asked the question, it is for pressure or pulse? Now the answer is clear, it is for both. It is for both, JVP stands for venous pulse also and venous pressure also, right? So now moving next, okay, that what are the, what are the, you know, uh, the differences, okay, that JVP pulse and the carotid pulse has, you know, there is a one more uh, important aspect that one must understand that, see, for example, the patient when you are measuring in the, you know, semi follow position, the patient is 45 degree angle placed okay and then the neck is rotated opposite side and then you are seeing with the torch light or with the any of the you know uh, the clear visibility if you are not able to see that then clean the area with the betadine and then you see with the focus light you will be able to understand the pulsation okay you will be able to you know see the pulsation so what i'm trying to say is uh, whatever you are seeing is the jugular venous pulsation or carotid pulsation the question has to be asked right because most of the time you know because we haven't come across this before clinically clinically no questions to be asked to the one cell that how many times we have gone into the ward into the icu and then we have gone for the jugular venous pulsation we have seen the pulsation how many of you are like that okay so even in my days, even in my days when I was in college, in my fourth year or third year, when I used to go to the ward, when I used to go to the ICU, I check the multi-parameter, I check the things and then, then I come back. Clinically, I have never correlated. Then I later on understood that this the untouched topic has to be covered, has to be covered. Okay, so how you are going to observe whether it is not a venous pulse, it is a carotid pulse or how you are going to observe that this is the carotid pulse and this is not a venous pulse. Okay, so I asked you to sit with the piece of paper and pen, note of it. Number one, okay, the venous pulse like an upstroke and downstroke, venous pulse will be like an upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke. Okay, in that, in that upstroke and downstroke, so venous pulse, whenever you see in the interjugular vein, it will be like a suction pulse. Up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. But arterial, carotid pulse, the definition, okay, the blood pressure says that there is a pressure exerted over the lateral wall of the arteries. Okay. So the column of the blood into the arteries are not much in the center. They are on the lateral aspect and then they are exerting the pressure. So the pressure, if this is the artery, then the pressure will be if it is getting the pulsation. Okay. So what I mean to say that the carotid pulse will be, it will come in and out, in and out, in and out, laterally, out, 
in out in out in out in out in so this is the in and out pulsation for the artery but for the venous up stroke down stroke that is the suction pulse okay so this is in and out in and out this is the up stroke down stroke up stroke down stroke number one uh, a wonderful concept that one must understand number two concept in the one cardiac cycle the venous stroke or the venous pulse you will be able to see feel twice a wave and c wave uh, sorry v wave c wave you know it is again it's a you know upstroke the closure of the valve but the pressure plate you know pressure is not that much that has been you know uh, radiate up to the you know this uh, 8 cm of h2 so it will be not seen as in a pulsation but yes upstroke will be there so a mild upstroke but a classical pulse you will see at the a wave and the v wave so in one thoroughly cardiac cycle in the venous system you will see two pulses whereas the carotid pulse will come only at the ventricular system once so major difference clinically see these are the basics you know that one should have you know here so the venous pulse with the you know establishment of the valve uh, this graph we can identify that in a one cardiac cycle we will get twice a wave and v wave so difference is quite obvious in the pulsation okay in the carotid pulsation only one stroke throughout the cardiac cycle that is ventricular systole whereas the pulsation in the venous is the twice in the one cardiac cycle so easily you can identify right number 2 sorry this was number 2 number 3 okay this pulsation okay this pulsation are not you know easily palpable because of the this sternocleo mastoid muscle but you can you know visualize it but until and unless you will be visualizes until and unless the patient is having a tricuspid valve regurgitation now why tricuspid valve regurgitation abnormal graph i will explain that so here you got to believe me yes whatever i am uh, you know telling that in the tricuspid valve it will be you know easily palpable also and easily visible also but until and unless that you know it will be it won't be easily uh, you know uh, palpable to you whereas the carotid pulse is easily palpable okay carotid pulse is easily palpable that we all know the carotid pulse how to palpate it so i am not going into detail of it okay so carotid pulse are easily palpable whereas the this venous pulse are not is easily palpable until and unless the patient is having a tricuspid regurgitation and what will happen in tricuspid regurgitation i will explain okay so don't worry about that so this was a third difference fourth difference okay very important if somebody if somebody with the help of hand okay catch the neck and press it a bit you know uh, cap a bit care you know we are not going to uh, press it more hard uh, with a care gentle care if we are pressing the neck okay it means what you are doing okay you are pressing the neck or you are pressing the neck okay somewhere over here at the sternal angle okay if you are pressing the neck the venous flow will be obstructed due to the pressure we have pressed the neck the venous pressure will be obstructed so will you be able to see this graph with the pulse because whatever the activity is coming here with the compression you have you know altered it okay so at that time the blood will not go down the blood will not go up if you have compressed it you know with a bit firm firm okay so the blood is not going down because of the compression and blood is not going up so pressure is not measured up or not down and as this hypothetical valve remains stagnant for a while this hypothetical mm -hmm. valve is remain stagnant for a while okay and hence and hence you can say that in the venous uh, that jugular vein there is no pulse but carotid does not get affect over there even though if you compress the neck okay carotid does not affect that so even at the compression of the neck venous pul pulsation will be absent but carotid will be there so fourth different different that i told you now fifth difference that how to identify carotid pulse and venous pulse see in the right upper quadrant okay in the right upper quadrant in the right upper quadrant what is happening okay the moment the moment you know 
in the uh, supine line position or even in the you know sitting position but preferably a doctor examine in the supine line position so patient is understand that the patient is in the supine line position okay and and in the right upper quadrant okay at the level of the liver if if you press it okay if you press it like in a reflex like in a jerk okay if you press it firmly okay what happens the cable blood okay inferior vena cava all the way from the portal vein inferior vena cava the the because of the pressure it will shoots up it will shoots up so if the pressure is very firm in the right upper quadrant okay so due to jerk the pressure will shoot up you have to clinically identify very nicely okay i would say 100 times if you check the you know this uh, reflex okay then 101th time you may be able to identify the slight upward movement because the due to the pressure the blood is you know pushing upward a bit fast due to this pressure and hence and hence there is a slight upward uh, movement of the hypothetical ball okay here i am pressing down see in fever ne kewa here is the right upper quadrant if i press the blood is shoots up okay and there is a slight upward movement okay whereas in the carotid pulsation even though if you press right side or the left side or whatsoever place carotid pulses are not going to leave its place it is not going upward it is not going downward it is just a pulsation of in and out this is the suction pulse up and down okay so it is based on the you know uh, suction pulse up and down the you give the pressure it will go up it up so this is the fifth difference that it will go up but carotid pulsation will not have any change over there okay fifth difference now sixth difference very important okay during the inspiration okay now i am um, uh, you know correlating the pulse wave form with the respiratory cycles okay so during the inspiration expiration inspiration expiration so what is happening during inspiration the thorax expand diaphragm descend downward and hence the vertical diameter and lateral diameter of the thorax is getting increase and the volume or the area is getting decreased that means pressure is getting decrease okay so intrathoracic pressure becomes negative and because the moment the intrathoracic pressure becomes negative we suck the air in so i suck the air in because the diaphragm descend down the intrathoracic pressure has been negative so the positive pressure to negative pressure the we can suck the air in so this was the respiratory cycle inspiration okay so forget about the air during the inspiration what is happening intrathoracic pressure occurring in the thorax because of that blood is coming back to the right atrium very fast during inspiration blood is coming back into the right atrium very fast so the it is returning back very fast during inspiration if return is very fast into the right atrium so this blood ball uh, the hypothetic ball will move upward or downward of course downward x descent it is called as an x descent okay so during the x uh, during the inspiration x descent will be very prominent over the graph on the multi parameter if the patient is taking for on a deep breath okay for example a copd patient okay patient is trying to take the deep breath at that time this graph will steeply it will steeply fall you have to understand that you have to understand that patient is taking a deep breath and hence your treatment comes into picture that avoid it deep breathing you know what are the precautions that you need to take deep breathing right because it is going for a prolonged deep breath okay it may damage the respiratory tracts okay so see this is where now i am see i am coming to pathology now slowly slowly okay see my my graph is also you know from the anatomy physiology basics and then slowly slowly graph and then now pathology so <laughs> be with me guys okay you will be thoroughly enjoy if you are there with me for all the whole session you will thoroughly enjoy let let, let me assure you that okay so in the inspiratory cycle okay in the respiration the steep fall of the x descent you will be able to identify okay that uh, that is the you know the 
uh, changes whereas the carotid pulses you know uh, there is no mark changes there is no mark changes in the carotid pulse but in a venous pulse steep fall in the x descent that you will be able to see okay so these are the major you know differences that one can have okay so i told you the differences okay between the uh, venous pulses and arterial pulses before you know observing the uh, this uh, before observing the uh, all the parameters of the calculation okay now okay now one thing that i would like to explain over here okay after the understanding the pulsation you have to place the patient into 45 degree that is the semi follow position then turn the neck apply the betadine okay and then apply the proper light and then see you have to identify the uh, sternal head and the clavicular head of the sternal master muscle in between okay there is the interjugular vein it is going upward and then the moment it uh, goes up to the master process this is the insertion okay master process there you may you know again see the uh, in and out you can see the interjugular vein a bit later okay so here this belly portion of the sternocleidomastro muscle you will be if you identify quite nicely you will see the suction pulsation up and down okay so that is how you have to you know observe it okay so this is what the once you identified the pulsation then i have let you know that how we are clinically observed okay and once we have clinically observed the whole pulsation okay now i will move towards the pathology that while observing if you see normal that's fine if you on the see the multi parameter screen everything is like okay a wave then a bit fall down then c wave and then uh, x descent and then v v wave positive and then y descent if you see normally and if you observe and if you identify okay absolutely fine see we have uh, in our assessment uh, you know there is a one uh, step that is the jugular venous pulsation that we have to observe and we have to check it out okay so we do take an assessment but do we really take an assessment to all the student do we really take an assessment <laughs> question to be asked yourself okay so what is happening over here what is happening now we are moving towards the abnormal pathological changes okay we are going or we are heading towards the abnormal pathological changes so for that purpose okay i am going to rub this diagram okay so here this let me rub this diagram so that i can show you the now abnormal yes let's understand see this is the line you can also draw with me this is the line for pressure this is the line for pressure okay so now in this line now i am drawing the you know at the 8 cm level okay let's understand this is the level of 8 cm this is the level of the 8 cm so how the graph will be this is the normal graph which is what i am going to draw now this this is the graph this is the graph okay i will highlight a bit you will be able to see quite nicely
so at the level of the 8 cm this is the normal graph i have drawn okay but now what is happening in ccf okay what is happening in ccf that is the cardiac failure let's assume the right ventricular failure let's assume that there is a right ventricular failure so may it may be because of core pulmonary assume that there is a lung there is a pathology to okay, core pulmonary which is not associated with the left ventricular failure it is purely and purely because of the lung diseases so a severe COPD and converted into M5 and then there is a pulmonary congestion. So there is a pulmonary hypertension occur and the backflow and due to that the right ventricle is going for hypertrophy. It is forcefully trying to contract but due to the core pulmonary, pulmonary hypertension due to the congestion, it is not able to send the blood into the pulmonary system. So at that time what is happening? The blood which is coming down into the atria and then evacuated into the ventricle. Is it going to possible now? Because the blood is there, end diastolic volume and end systolic volume, everything is there itself now. Okay, so even after the contraction, end systolic volume is remaining more and hence the pressure is developing back and then it will fall you know it will go upward so hypothetical ball will raise upward so normal is the 8 centimeter if it is going above then it is abnormal so normal it is 8 centimeter of h2o why centimeter why h2o i have explained thoroughly so if it is going beyond that so in ccf what is happening due to the back flow okay due to the back flow ccf what is happening the the you know the graph will graph will not change but pressure will get change same graph matlab a wave c wave x descent v wave y wave same yahan pe niche bhi okay a wave descent then c wave then x descent then v wave and then y wave same graph will be okay but what will happen pressure will get change here it was 8 centimeter this become maybe 10 centimeter this will become the 10 centimeter so the graph is same there is no alteration in the waves but it will shift towards the positive okay because the pressure has been shifted upward so because the pressure has been shifted upward the pressure okay here is what 8 centimeter here it will become the 10 centimeter okay understood now there is a one more pathology okay so the moment the pressure is getting shifted from the 8 centimeter to 10 centimeter and that means you know raised jvp raised jugular venous pressure raised jugular venous pressure in the multi parameter if you see that raised jugular venous pressure at that time you have to think this is because of the backflow of the blood and backflow right ventricle you have to understand either it will be a right ventricular failure either it would be a core pulmonale either it would be a congestion okay lung congestion so you have to think clinically now see i have started clinically everything okay so you have to think clinical so you have to think clinically understood so that is what i said to, i told you know that normal graph we understood but how we will understand the abnormal graph and correlate with the clinical condition so you have to think when the raised jvp it means there is an a back pressure volume overload in the cable system volume overload in the cable system a hypothetical ball will shift upward so this pointer is not over here over the piece of paper it will somewhere over here and it will start the graph from above so it will start start the graph from above so clinically you have to judge right okay and you know guys let me tell you if you start clinically judging now in ICU you will not get afraid of anything you know it will be very wonderful to understand conceptually you have to clear all the concept which I have told you okay number two if the graph is remain stagnant or no uh, not a bit pulsation like this okay 
a graph is remaining stagnant or not in the altered position okay something like this so because you know now you can see that where you know uh, the a wave then c wave descent x descent y descent you know they have been altered now they have been altered but you can appreciate the pressure has been raised you can appreciate the pressure has been raised this is a 8 cm this is 10 cm this is more than that maybe 12 cm okay so you can appreciate that the pressure has been raised but there is no waveform like in a normal pattern so at that time what you can reckon how you will identify the pressure has been there but the pulsation is not there see you have to basics back again this waveform because of the you know first atrial contraction first waveform closure of the valve backflow c okay then filling occurs but now the atm is filled so backflow is occurring that means v wave so this positive wave and negative wave which are the coming okay that faithfully transmitted into the jvp jugular venous okay but here this waveform are not over here but it is raised the pressure it means you have to understand that guys there is there is there is jugular venous or superior vena cava either anyone jugular vein or superior vena cava either there is an a big mass or big obstruction so i have drawn with the black pen in the superior vena cava or in the jugular vein there is a big mass or this big obstruction okay caval obstruction i would rather say okay so superior vena vena cava or jugular vein because of this obstruction what is happening you know this cardiac cycle is running its own pace on time this cardiac cycle but what is happening faithfully in the manometer this biological manometer faithfully it is failed to transmit the pressure it failed fully transmit the pulse sorry not pressure pressure is getting accumulated now here because the blood is not going down so the moment the blood is not going down all the way from the head and neck brain into the jugular vein okay and the blood will started accumulating and the moment started accumulating it raised the pressure and that raised the pressure is 8 cm 10 cm and above that 12 cm so pressure raised number one sort but waves will not be formed why because faithfully now it acts as an obstruction so those wave form which has been formed by the cardiac cycle which i explained you earlier those wave form will not faithfully transmit because of obstruction so there is no wave so guys if you see in the icu in the multi parameter like such raised jvp with no wave form you have to think that this is the caval obstruction you have to think this okay you have to clinically judge the patient that there is no some caval obstruction in that superior vena cava or jugular vein internal of course okay so this pattern of the waveform will explain the whole story okay so this was the normal this was the congestive cardiac failure this was the this was the major major obstruction in the superior vena cava or interjugular vein okay now sometimes okay sometimes we get a large a wave sometimes we get a large a wave see here the a wave is normal here a wave is normal this was the normal graph so a wave is normal okay here a wave is absent completely because of the caval obstruction there is a dissociation okay right atrium and jugular vein there is a dissociation because of this clot or the mass okay now large a wave when you know the large a wave you will get this can you see it is a large a wave if you see this graph and if you see this graph can you identify that i have drawn a bit large a wave okay this large a wave is because when 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 you will see the large a wave okay okay so it because mainly now understand very clearly 
because of the pulmonary hypertension okay because of the pulmonary hypertension number one because of pulmonary stenosis number one is pulmonary hypertension number two is pulmonary stenosis okay number three is right ventricular hypertrophy number three is right ventricular hypertrophy and number four is tricuspid stenosis number four is the tricuspid stenosis now each condition i will explain how it will occur let's start with the pulmonary hypertension because of the pulmonary hypertension what is happening okay the blood it not it will not be able to go forward it will not be able to go forward during the right ventricular uh, contraction so the moment it will not be able to go forward it will give the back pressure but now this back pressure is very severe at one point of time initially what it does that back pressure increase the pressure in the JVP so waveform is not getting altered but just pressure is getting altered but later on if it is more severe and the right ventricular hypertrophy occur because of the pulmonary hypertension so the because of the pulmonary hypertension the right ventricular hypertrophy occur in the later stage so right ventricle is forcefully contract and even though it contracts number one it gives the back pressure it gives what the back pressure number one and number two number two what is happening during when the atrium contract when the atrium contract here is already so many blood is filled so it will not go further down so i told you in the initial stage in the a wave the blood has a two way to go down okay one is the downward the blood which is there nearby tricuspid area and the blood which is about to enter into the atrium so when the atrial contraction occurs against the pressure against the resistance i would say which resistance this is the right ventricular hypertrophy and pulmonary hypertension so this right atrium has to so much strongly pump hard okay because of that pump hard it strongly it strongly blood is now not going down this blood nearby the tricuspid valve also no it will go back initially what i told it will go down it will kick slow feeling wala a wave but due to pulmonary hypertension and systolic volume is high and because of the right ventricular hypertrophy what is happening this is volume overloaded the whole setup in the right ventricle pulmonary valve and the pulmonary system is that whole setup is in a volume overloaded but the blood is so much high over there so that the blood which is there nearby the tricuspid area will not go down it will go back because there is a no sphincter in the atria and the biological manometer okay so there is a no sphincter so this blood is also go back forcefully because it is not going down and hence large a wave produce because now more blood is coming back so for example this much the hypothetical ball should go normally now it is go this much because the major amount of blood will go upward rather than going downward into the ventricle because end systolic volume is so much high due to pulmonary hypertension and due to the right ventricular hypertrophy correct right and because of that there will be a strong large a wave so i talked about the pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy what will happen to pulmonary stenosis pulmonary stenosis matlab you all know that the a little amount of blood if it is in a early stage matlab mild or moderate if it is severe calcified okay definitely it will not allow any of the blood to go into the pulmonary system so all the end diastolic volume at the end of the ventricle contraction it will convert into end systolic volume the amount of blood which is there at the end of the diastole of ventricle is called as an end diastolic volume but the moment after diastole it get contracts blood has to ejected out but due to the pulmonary stenosis it is not ejected out and then the contraction over and relaxation started so end contraction at the end of the systole now volume of the blood is remaining inside is called as an end systolic volume so end systolic volume will be as it is and hence it will not further fill the blood okay into the ventricle from the atria so when the atria contracts blood will not go down it will again return back into the k1 system and again large wave again it will be a large wave so because of the hypertrophy this may 
occur and because of the pulmonary hypertension this may occur and because of the pulmonary stenosis it may occur last tricuspid stenosis now guys you only tell me what will happen in tricuspid stenosis because of this stenosis do you really think that the blood will come down from atria to ventricle it is difficult right so less amount of blood from the atria to ventricle is coming and hence the majority of the blood during the atrial contraction due to during the atrial kick the majority amount of the blood will go so the hypothetical ball will raised up largely largely okay so and hence you will see the large a wave so this wave is seen large it is called as a large a wave and it is called as an you know a large a wave uh, because the wave is becoming large and the condition that i told you is the pulmonary hypertension number 1 then pulmonary stenosis number 2 right ventricular hypertrophy number 3 and then tricuspid stenosis number 4 so these four conditions so if you see in the multi parameter a large a wave you have to guys think clinically it could be four of this it could be four of this so other investigations we are making it not an issue but this is also now important see in assessment i told you about jvp we are taking but thoroughly we are taking the question to be tagged the question to be asked okay so in that context okay so in that context what we need to understand clinically 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 we have to understand this okay right so this is about the large a waves okay but see this wave how the a wave behaves larger 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 than larger right okay that is called as an canon wave that is called as an canon wave make a note of it that is called as an canon wave what are the condition in which you see such large a wave okay large a wave is this but this is the larger 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 a wave okay so that is called as an canon wave what are the condition that you see the canon wave number 1 is the third degree heart block number 1 is the third degree heart block let us assume that okay this i will draw okay see consider this is the consider this is the heart this is the septum okay in the septum this is over here is an ascii node and this is a big av node i'm showing right now and from av node there is an package fiber for the right and left heart okay so now what is happening see third degree heart block okay in it means what is happening this is the valve this is the tricuspid valve this is the mitral valve i am not showing the aorta in pulmonary right now arteries okay so normally what is happening as an node fires it triggers the atrium and then impulse comes to the av node then from there it will come to the bundle of branch and then bundle of face bundle of branch right bundle branch left bundle branch ventricle go for a depolarization but due to the third degree heart block what is happening see there is complete there is 
complete can you see there is a complete dissociation there is a complete dissociation of the AV node dissociation gets you know completely blocked okay there is no conductivity now because of that SA node trigger regularly on time but but impulse reach up to the AV node and not able to transfer the impulse to the heart so here later on in later stage what is happening it develops its own pacemaker okay ventricle develops its own pacemaker so i am showing this with the red pen so this is the new pacemaker for the ventricle and this was the pacemaker for the atria as as you know so this produce you know 72 to 80 beats per minute this produce hardly 40 to 50 beats per minute okay so completely dissociation so at times what is happening when the atria contracts okay ventricle relax maybe when ventricle contracts atria relax maybe but at one point of time throughout the you know uh, the period okay what happens when the signal comes from the SA node and the atria defrost and contract at the same time signal comes from the this pacemaker which is generated newly and it will also contract the ventricles so when the atria is also contracting and ventricle is also contracting okay it means when the ventricle contract forcefully compared to atria that we all know because of the high musculature and the pressure okay compared to atria so ventricle contracting forcefully shut the valve what it does it does the shut the valve and at the moment when the valve gets shut atria contracts forcefully so see what is happening against the closing of the valve this ventricle is how strongly pressurized and producing the pressure contracting and shutting the valve at the same time atria is also contracting and pushing the blood down but it is not happening because valve is closed and atria is under contraction valve is closed and entry under immense contraction highly contraction pressurized situation okay compared uh, in the uh, right ventricle compared to atrium so right atrium is against the pressure of the right ventricle contracting number one high pressure it is contracting number one and the right atrium number two is contracting against the closed valve so because of that strongly strongly there is an upward stroke of the venous blood strongly there is an upward stroke of the venous blood okay and because of that this large cannon wave comes okay because two factors it is contracting against the pressurized ventricle number one and it is contracting against the closed valve so two factor play a major role okay that it gives the cannon wave large wave ki agar baat karu to that why not large wave is a condition is called as in cannon wave because tricuspid valve closed stenosis okay but at that time you know at that time ventricle you know which gives the contraction relaxation because the the blood which is there you know the blood which is there in the ventricle okay it is going out where the ventricle was relaxed okay whereas over here here the blood is going out where the atrium is relaxed but whereas in this whereas in this the blood is going out so ventricle is contracting but atria is also contracting here atria was relaxed so large a waves here when the ventricle contracting atria is also contracting against the pressure against the right ventricle pressure okay and that is the reason it is showing more larger than this large okay so this is the major difference that the one should recognize okay so and hence this is called as a cannon wave okay another condition that i can explain is the ventricular tachycardia okay let's understand that ventricular tachycardia that how it occurs okay in this heart only see there is a piece of an myocardium which has a you know ability to generate tachycardia that is has an ability to produce its own impulse the piece of the myocardium
So this is the piece of the myocardium. Okay. So this is the piece of the myocardium in which there is enough, you know, abnormal myocardial fibers which has an ability to generate its own impulse and that is called as a ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so in this what is happening? Ventricular tachycardia means it generates its own impulse at the rate of 130, 140, 150. So called tachycardia, right? So it sometimes go beyond that also, 160, 170 also. So ventricular tachycardia, here the SNO produces 70 to 80 beats per minute. So complete dissociation of the ventricular contraction and atrial contraction. Complete dissociation of the ventricular contraction and atrial contraction. Okay. So at that time, what is happening? Throughout the whole uh, phase, there is a one phase will come in which same like third degree heart rock that atrial contracts from the SA node at the same time due to ventricular tachycardia, ventricle also contracts. So ventricular is pressurized and the valve is closed. Ventricle is pressurized, okay, and the valve is shut. It is closed, and at the same time, atria is going to contract. Same like third degree hard blow, it will give the cannon wave because pressurized ventricle, okay, closed valve against which atrium is also contracting, and hence all the blood has to go back. All the blood has to go back. And the moment all the blood has to go back, this hypothetical ball will raise and this will produce the cannon wave. Okay. But in this two condition, make a note of that. Okay. Right. And uh, make a note of it. We do not know when this happened because SA node triggers at what time? We don't know. Ventricular uh, node uh, triggers what time? We do not know. So when, you know, both the atrial and ventricular contract together, we don't know. We only can see in the multi-parameter. But there is a one condition, one more condition, which produces the cannon, cannon wave, which is regular in each wave. This was not regular in each wave. Okay, for example, this wave becomes normal. When? Why? Because SA node contracted, uh, ventricle was relaxed. So this might be a normal wave. Okay, but so next cycle, SA node contract, ventricle also contract. The so next cycle, you will get the cannon wave. Okay same third degree heart block it may occur right that the new pacemaker contract okay at the time atria relax so not an issue but when the atria contract ventricle relax so not an issue so when atria contract atrial peak normal a wave but next to next cycle atria is also contract ventricle is also contract and then produce a cannon wave so the classical thing that i wanted to tell you cannon wave is not producing all each individual jugular venous graph Cannon wave is not produced always all the time in each jugular venous graph. Make a note of that. But there is a one more condition. There is a one more condition in which in each ventricular graph, uh, that is uh, jugular venous graph, you will get the cannon wave. You will get the cannon wave. Okay. What is that condition? That condition is called as a nodal rhythm. That condition is called as a nodal rhythm. Nodal rhythm means what? As a node is not triggering or not firing. Now AV node is the only one who is you know firing for both. Okay, so AV node is firing for both. Let me show with the you know arrow. So AV node sending the impulse for the atria. Okay and AV node is sending the impulse for the ventricle because SA node is not triggered now. So I hope you can appreciate that this AV node sending the impulse into the ventricle that is blue arrow at the same time AV node is sending the impulse to the atria so atria is also contracting at the same time ventricle is also contracting at the same time when the AV node produces an impulse because either side 
on the upper side and the lower side either side impulses are coming at the same time so ventricle is also contracting going for depolarization atrium is also contracting going for depolarization so immediately ventricle contracts valve gets shut atrium contracts against the pressure and the valve shut and every cycle can unveil in every cycle can unveil next bit occurs ventricle contracts same time atria contracts valve against the closure valve against the uh, high pressure of the ventricle so again next cycle comes okay the blood is not going down into the tricuspid valve blood is not going down into through the tricuspid valve okay atria contracts same time ventricle contracts valve is shut okay and hence it will go back all the blood of the right atrium go back and produce the cannon wave so this is the nodal rhythm of the av node is the only one condition okay that gives the cannon wave in each jugular venous graph so guys make a statement now if you are going into the icu see the multi parameters and if you see the each each wave of the jugular vein and in the each jugular vein if you see the cannon wave larger 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 than larger wave you do not need to ask doctor you do not need to open the medical file you do not need to talk to relative you do not need to talk to patient what happened to you you do not need to ask your friend what is the case straight away you have to think this is the nodal rhythm straight away you have to think this is nodal rhythm guys clinically i am letting you know these things are you are you getting the point clinically i am letting you know all this thing you have to think for this is the nodal rhythm if it is irregular cannon wave is irregular then you have to think this is the third degree heart block complete dissociation ya to ventricular tachycardia so you have to correlate what is the pulse form and what is the heart rate right now okay heart rate is more than 150 uh, sorry 120 130 150 and if you see irregular cannon wave if the heart rate is more than 120 130 and if you see the cannon wave you need to understand that patient is having a ventricular tachycardia understood the same way third degree heart block right so this is how the clinically we have to judge the thing okay so i have explained about the cannon wave okay now i will talk about the cv wave okay that is cv wave there is an a fusion of cv wave okay guys bear with me there is hardly now 15 minutes that i am going to take okay cv wave okay it is called as a fusion of cv wave fusion they merge together they get merged together so called as a cv wave okay so what happens now it is the clear cut happens in the tricuspid regurgitation see i told you that uh, during tricuspid regurgitation i will explain what happens okay the pulsation will be very obvious it will be you, you will be able to feel you will be able to see you will be able to palpate in tricuspid regurgitation what is happening now see okay i'll explain over here here is the tricuspid regurgitation so during the ventricular contraction okay the blood is going into the pulmonary system as well as blood is returned back blood is written back into the atria so when ventricle was contracting atria was relaxing atria was relaxing the atria relaxing means this x descent when the ventricle was contracting atria was relaxing x descent the atrium when get filled okay no more blood is accumulated in the atria then back flow and then that is a v wave positive strong v wave remember my you know the earlier lecture you know so now what is happening due to the regurgitation valve is regurgitated into the atria and hence the ventricle contracts here atrium relaxation and the pressure is falling this x descent is falling pressure is falling x descent is coming due to the atrial relaxation but at the same time when the atrium contracts back pressure occurs this back pressure create the more positive pressure in the atrium and back flow into the cavel system this back pressure okay because strongly right ventricle contracting compared to the atrial contraction so strongly when the right ventricle contracts okay the back pressure occurs and that back pressure goes into the cavel system and because of it goes into the cavel system okay what happens x descent get off okay because x descent what was atrial relaxed ventricle con ventricle contract it goes out at that time atria relax and blood will go down so x descent but now x descent will not appear what will appear due to the contraction the 
blood will go back into the cable system and then from the C wave because the ventricle contract valve get uh, closed and it produces the C wave. Okay, so ventricle contract valve will get closed, it has produced C wave and then further it contract, it will give the backflow, it will not go for X descent, filling will not occur, backflow will occur, pressure will shoot up, so valve wave will form from C to V. Okay, the wave will come from C to V. So this wave from C to V is something like this. with the black pen I will no with the blue pen okay so this X descent will not come and the wave will get merged with the V So there is a complete loss of X descent There is a complete loss of X descent And the graph from the C wave it will merge with the V wave so this downfall and upward upward was in a V wave okay so it will from X descent will not come from the C wave it will come to the V wave okay X descent blood was coming during the filling time but during filling time ventricle contract blood returned back so X descent could not appear straight away ball hypothetically gone up Okay, and then it has gone up and joined the V wave. Why V wave? Because after the ventricle contraction, after the ventricle contraction, ventricle will relax and the ventricle will relax. Whatever the amount of blood which is there will return back down and that will return back down is the Y descent. So from C wave to V wave, V wave to Y descent. There is loss of this phase. And the moment you see the loss of this phase, the moment in the multi-parameter in the ICU, if you see the loss of V, this X descent, you immediately have to think of tricuspid regurgitation. That the person right now is suffering from the tricuspid, tricuspid regurgitation. If, if you see the post-op case, post-op case, so you have to get this X descent back. If it is post-op case, the tricuspid regurgitation has been repaired okay so then you have to see that the x descent should come if the x descent is not coming back you have to understand that still there is a problem with the tricuspid regurgitation see clinically right so clinically i am making you understand that being a physio you know don't simply stand in front of patient and in the multi parameter we have to take an assessment we have to clinically identify we have to clinically you know uh, correlate with our basics with all the basics that i have explained we have to correlate all the conditions then only you will be called as a good clinician or so good uh, you know performer right so this is what happened in this whole you know uh, scenario in which the tricuspid regurgitation takes place cv wave fusion c and v get fused x descent will be lost okay now one more thing that you know very important how to identify it okay one more thing that how we need to identify okay see for example on opposite side that is left side right this is the our ipsilateral same side jahan pe hum check kar rahe sab kuch right side so on the opposite side this is the very important technique one must understand first step is feel the carotid pulse the moment you feel the carotid pulse okay now in you know uh, the patient when you uh, see or palpate okay the jugular venous whether you see or palpate the jugular venous pulse okay so if on the left side if you get the carotid pulse see very neatly you have to do it because fraction of second this is the thing is happening so before the carotid pulse if you see the pulse in the venous side 
okay before the carotid pulse if you see the pulse in the venous side you have to understand this is the a this a wave this is the a wave right carotid pulse comes because of the ventricle contraction but before that atrial contraction occur and produce the a wave carotid pulse when it comes when the left ventricle right ventricle contracts blood goes into the arch of aorta ascending aorta arch of aorta then carotid okay from the arch of aorta it is going to the left common carotid and then carotid right and left internal and external carotid artery so the moment it goes into carotid we get the pulse but when we got the pulse when the ventricle contract but before that what has happened atrial has gone contract and produce the a wave so when you see the carotid pulse and before this pulse if you get the pulse over here that is the a wave that is the a wave and after the carotid pulse once you got the carotid pulse feel and if you see the wave that is the v wave v wave is what ventricle contraction ho gaya ab dilatation mein ja raha hai the moment it is going for dilatation valve opened hai so it is going for rapid filling so ventricle contract ho chuka matlab carotid pulse aa chuka we got the carotid pulse and then this valve opened up because of the rapid filling okay pressure gradient so valve got opened the rapid filling occurs and then suddenly balls comes down okay and there is a wide descent there is a wide descent so if you see the carotid pulse after uh, you get and after that if you see the pulsation over here that is the v wave that is the v wave so number 1 before carotid pulse if you see that is the a wave in the venous before carotid pulse if you see the wave that is the v wave but the, along with the carotid pulse along with the carotid pulse if you see the venous pulse along with not before before means a wave after means v wave before the carotid pulse a wave before the uh, after the carotid pulse v wave but with along with carotid pulse if you see the venous pulse that means cv wave why cv wave when the left ventricle contract carotid pulse occurs along with that right ventricle is also contract tricuspid valve regurgitation is there the back flow occurs and the back flow still occurs cv wave get forms so the moment the both ventricle contract in carotid arch of aorta in carotid you get the pulse consider here there is a carotid artery so you are palpating the carotid artery same time right ventricle left ventricle contract carotid artery pulsation occurs okay and same time if the ventricle right ventricle contracts the back, due to the tricuspid regurgitation the back pressure is also occurring and cv wave gets formed because the raised in the pressure so along with the carotid pulse if you see the pulsation of the v wave that means you are you need to understand clinically if with the carotid pulse if you see the pulse that is the cv wave fusion and you have to tell that sir this is final tricuspid regurgitation i don't need to go for any examination i don't need to check any other things this is the only thing confident you have to be confident yes so we don't need to have an any further you know uh, report medical report or any further investigation clinically you have to be very smart enough at least you have an idea that this could be the condition then later on investigation are just to confirm the diagnosis right so be a strong you know uh, practitioner in field of cardiopulmonary now the last part that is the fredrick sign and cosmol sign okay the last part what is fredrick sign and what is cosmol sign this fredrick signs and cosmol signs is strongly related to the jvp strongly related to the jvp and what is happening in that the major condition is called as a constrictive pericarditis the major condition is constrictive pericarditis let's assume if this is the pericardium outer layer of the heart let's assume this is the pericardium and this pericardium is constricted because of the inflammation okay so this pericardium is been constricted because of inflammation
so what is happening because of an inflammation there is an excessive you know pressure over both the ventricles because of the inflammation of the pericardium there is an excessive pressure over the ventricle now we all know that the right ventricular musculature is thinner compared to the left ventricle okay the right ventricle musculature is thinner than the left ventricle so there is a more chance for a constriction over the right ventricle compared to left and we want right side of the heart right now not the left side because jvp is not related to do with the left side it isn't right side right side so during the diastole the you know the ventricle will not be able to relax because of the constrictive constrictive means constriction pericarditis inflammation of the pericardium so due to that constriction the ventricle during the diastole will not be able to relax properly and because of that what is happening it will keep giving the back pressure into the it will keep giving the back pressure into the ventricle and because of this pressure constriction because of this pressure because of the constriction what is happening the blood which supposed to come down okay the blood which supposed to come down okay it will not come down the way it supposed to be the blood will not come down the way it is supposed to be for example atrial contraction occurs here atrial contraction occurs in normal condition there is no constrictive pericarditis so the moment atrial kick occur the blood goes down but it has a two way to go downward and upward so the blood which is then near the tricuspid area will go downward the blood which is about to enter into the atrium will go upward and produce a wave but due to constrictive pericarditis okay the ventricle does not relax properly okay blood cannot relax properly so the moment the atria contract atria contract against the pressure and the blood at the same time will not be able to come down okay so blood will not be able to come down at the same time so what is happening you know what is happening at the same time when you see okay the uh, the blood which is not coming down properly okay at the same time we see that there is an a steep increase in the a wave not large wave large wave is stenosis okay where the blood is not coming down here the blood is coming down okay so here you can see the steep a wave steep okay so i will show with the green color so there is a steep a wave can you see the steep a wave and then further other waves are same so when we see the steep a wave but there is a not large wave difference is there between steep and large constrictive pericarditis so can you see the wave is steep rise okay so steep rise in the wave steep rise in the wave because of the constriction ventricle okay the pressure is given into the ventricle the left ventricle uh, sorry right ventricular musculature is thin compared to left so it, it easily pushes inward the constrictive pericarditis because of that what is happening the blood okay which is coming down is very slow okay the blood which is coming down is very slow earlier it was a tricuspid stenosis so due to stenosis there was a large wave all the blood was coming up and then there was a large wave here it is not larger wave difference is steep why steep atria has to forcefully contract atria has to forcefully contract to evacuate all the blood which is there in the atria to ventricle okay this is the column of the blood so atria has to strongly contract to send the blood into the ventricle so the moment it strongly contract it produce the steep a wave okay so that steep a wave in the constrictive pericarditis remember that steep a wave in the constrictive pericarditis both the things are merging together constrictive pericarditis number 1 and steep a wave number 2 if two things are positive in the patient then 
it is called as an Frederick sign. It is called as an Frederick sign. The constrictive pericarditis is number one positive. It pushes the right ventricle because of that there is the pressure of the right ventricle is more so the blood in the right vent uh, right atrium is coming down but very forcefully it has to contract and it, uh, atrium has to contract and coming down and hence there is a steep a wave that steep a wave because of the highly strongly contraction of the atrium okay and the blood is pushing down and that steep a wave along with the constrictive pericarditis it is called as in frederick sack okay so this is about the Frederick sign and last thing is the Cosmol sign last thing is the Cosmol sign what is happening in the Cosmol sign same in the constrictive pericarditis I will explain over here okay we, we have to correlate with the respiratory cycle in the constrictive pericarditis and normal okay what we told during inspiration we told that X descent comes down I explained very nicely okay the blood because inspiration intrathoracic pressure decrease all the blood will come down so the X descent will be very prominent okay so blood is coming down so X descent is becoming prominent okay so the during inspiration the blood is coming down the pressure in the jugular vein will be less and during the expiration the intrathoracic pressure become high during expiration the intrathoracic pressure become high and because of the intrathoracic pressure become high, the blood will not return back as it was in inspiration. Forcefully nahi aayega, jaldi nahi aayega, rapidly nahi aayega. Okay, so in the expiration, the pressure becomes a bit high. Okay, so graph will be something like this. Okay. So the graph will be something like this. Okay. I will rub this piece of paper wala a bit area. okay so let's assume that okay this is the black pressure line okay let me put it a bit further more so on the same paper i'm showing the graph okay and that graph will be during inspiration this like this I have drawn the two cycle cycle number one cycle number two two cycles okay so uh, yes one more thing okay so i have two cycles cycle number one a wave c wave x descent v wave and y descent again a wave c wave x descent v wave and y descent. two cycle this is inspiratory cycle okay when you know the x descent is coming down pressure is down this is markedly increased during expiration because pressure is falling during inspiration all the blood is coming down all the blood is coming down so this is the level of pressure let's assume this is the uh, you know for roughly 6 cm of H2 this is now 10, uh, 6 or 7 cm of H2 so during inspiration the pressure is got down the graph is a bit down and during the expiration okay the pressure the blood is not returning back into the right atrium as rapidly as in inspiration so the pressure is a bit high so the air wave is a bit high correlate quite nicely now see in constrictive pericarditis this is the normal this is the normal this is inspiratory graph this is expiratory graph this is normal okay now in constrictive pericarditis what is happening during inspiration the blood should return back more during inspiration the blood should return back more from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava into the right atrium but during constrictive pericarditis it compresses the right ventricle and hence the pressure exerted into the atrium 
so even though the atrium contracts it has to forcefully push the blood into the right ventricle so major amount of blood the pressure will exert it backward because of the constrictive severe constrictive pericarditic during the inspiration normally occurs that it comes down normally but in constrictive pericarditis the when the blood comes down due to this pressure the back pressure occurs from the ventricular musculature from the right side into the right ventricle into the right atrium and then there is no wall or sphincter in between no wall or sphincter so because of that the pressure exerted into cable system venous system and hence because of that what is happening what is happening the ball hypothetical should go up but this phase was an inspiratory phase normally what should happen it should come down but in inspiratory phase of the constrictive pericarditis the ball should go up so during inspiration when you see the graph like this that during inspiration now i'll show you the inspiratory graph during inspiration a wave gone up c wave down v wave and down but during expiration normal a wave c wave down v wave down so see blue color is normal red color is abnormal so during inspiration it should be normal inspiratory and then expiration should raised up because blood is not coming back into the right atrium so ball will be slight up so raised one during expiration during inspiration blood is all the way coming down in the right atrium so ball should go down so down a wave and high a wave inspiratory expiratory normal due to constrictive pericarditis pressure is given into the right ventricle musculature into the right ventricle and into the right atrium so during expiration the blood supposed to come down but due to the pressure it is not able to come down it will go up okay so during inspiration red color graph that it will go a bit high during inspiration compared to normal and during expiration it is coming down jo actually upar jana chahiye tha during expiration it is coming down so during inspiration it is up during expiration it is coming down that reversal of the graph reverse ho gaya na graph inspiration mein down jana chahiye tha to upward ho gaya expiration mein upward jana chahiye tha to downward ho gaya so this reversal of the graph is called as an paradoxical jvp graph yes the very important concept the paradoxical jvp graph paradoxical because it is occurring in a reverse manner see guys till date we have seen about the paradoxical pulse we have seen about the paradoxical embolism have you heard about paradoxical jvp graph this is it this is it so paradoxical jvp graph with the respiratory cycle is in inverted comma in capital and block you have to tell that it is a cosmal sign cosmal signs is the one found by a scientist cosmal okay the name of the scientist was in a cosmal so he identified this sign as in a cosmal sign okay in which normally the inspiratory cycle the graph should go down because of the uh, the return of the uh, blood into the right atrium normal and expiration the ball should go up because positive intrathoracic pressure blood will not enter into the right atrium as it is in inspiration okay but that is normal not pathology pathology due to constrictive pericarditis pressure in the right uh, ventricle raise it and uh, because of that the pressure goes into the right atrium so back flow will be there and because of that the graph will be during the inspiration is higher level okay actually it should be lower level it should go higher level and during expiration graph should go upward in normally but due to constrictive pericarditis it is going downward okay and and that graph is completely reversed that graph is completely reversed is called as an paradoxical graph okay and this paradoxical jvp found by the scientist cosmol dr cosmol is called as an cosmol sign right so cosmol signs that we identify now last but not the least okay now last but not the least is the hepato jugular reflux 
effect of jugular reflex i have already told you earlier but uh, right now i will clinically explain that what happens in hepatojugular reflex the moment you press the right upper quadrant okay the moment you press the right upper quadrant in normal patient if you you know very smart observer you will see the raise in the jvp if you in a supine line patient if you press it you just give a stroke okay so moment you will give a stroke over here there is a slight raise in the jvp if you are smart observer okay but that is normal in all but in hepatojugular reflux what is happening in the patient in the patient who is having the right ventricular stiffness a patient who is having the right ventricular stiffness which will or right ventricular hypertrophy in which the pressure exerted over the over the right atrium during the systole even during the diastole also the pressure is exerted because of the hypertrophy so during the systole during the diastole both the time the pressure is exerted over the right atrium so what is happening during the uh, hepato uh, jugular reflex the moment you now compress and the patient is having a right ventricular hypertrophy or stiffness okay the pressure is already exerted okay so there is in a back flow number 1 and this pressure is given through the stroke so the blood from here and from here both the side it will come okay towards the jugular vein and this elevation of the pressure of the jugular vein is more than 1 cm number 1 and it will stay there for 200 seconds 200 seconds and that condition when it persist 1 cm raised jvp along with 200 it second it persist there then you have to understand that during this reflex if you identify this then the patient is having a right ventricular hypertrophy along with stiff ventricle okay so clinically i have explained almost all the condition which is related to the jvp normal anatomy physiology graph basics and then advance and then pathology and then of course measurement okay and few concepts that few concept that i have explained so hereby i would like to conclude my session i know i have gone beyond the you know time but uh, sir would understand priyanshu sir would understand quite nicely that there were so many things that i wanted to deliver so many things that i wanted to convey to all my beloved student okay so uh, student please please do practice this in your clinical setup and uh, give me the feedback that uh, how you liked my session there is an a feedback form that will be circulated to all of you so please give the feedback that how you liked my session and if any improvement need to be done i will strongly improve myself to present you because see i believe my feedback is student only if they give me proper feedback i will be able to improve myself day by day by day so priyanshu sir once again thank you thank you thank you very much that uh, you know you have provided such an a platform to student as well as to me so even in the lockdown situation virtually with the platform of youtube uh, we are you know gathering together and uh, still education you know at the peak at most at most we are keeping at an a priority and still we are doing the better and better and better for all the students so all over the viewers who are listening to me please fill up the feedbacks if you have any doubts please mention in the comment box please reach out to me and last but not the least thank you nidhi ma'am for all the technical support and all the other uh, rk university technical staff who is going to you know do the rest of the duty uh, behalf of me Uh, so thank you thank you very much sir and if you have if you have any queries or any doubt please 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 do reach out to me thank you